what is going on YouTube welcome back to another video if you're new to the channel then I guess welcome to the channel <laughs> today's video we're gonna be doing a six month 600 mile review of my 2022 Can-Am XRC Turbo RR so it's actually been a little bit more than like six months since I purchased this thing um, we're a little bit closer to eight months but I figured whatever I didn't do a six month video I planned on doing it we have a newborn at home things come up so today we're doing the six month review of the x3 in this video i'm gonna be going over the good the things i love about it since i officially have some time in it now and uh the bad there are a couple uh flaws i have uh, a couple hiccups if you will that i've came across since i've owned this thing um so we're gonna get into all that in this video also we're going to be doing a full parts list uh, mod list uh type of review type video i'm gonna be going over all the mods that i've done to the machine since i have bought it and kind of just touching base on the things I like about it. I like about the mods that I've done to it um, because there was a budget in mind when I purchased some of these mods. So I'll be going over all that stuff, how the mods are holding up and uh, pretty much a review of that as well. If you guys are familiar with the XRC, you know they come factory with the 32 inch Maxxis Liberties, 15 inch bead locks. Um, it's a 2022, so it has a P drive clutch on it. Uh, a couple other things that the XRC comes with is the front, uh, they call it pre-runner pre style bumper. And then the winch comes with the aluminum hard roof that has these quick disconnects, which are pretty fantastic. And it also comes with the lower door panels, as you guys can see here. Real quick before we jump into the mods, um, I like I said, I've owned this machine for about eight months. I'm just at about 600 miles. I know I'm supposed to be doing my first oil change at 500 miles. That's probably going to be the next thing that I do to it. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do a video on it yet, but I'm gonna do a full service to it because it's officially almost summer now. As you can see, everything's greening up. So we're gonna be doing some riding. I wanna make sure everything is uh, good to go. So starting with the mods, this isn't the order that I did the mods in. I'm just starting front to back on the machine. Um, up first, we have the Kemimoto fender flares um, with these big 32 inch tires, 72 inch width without the fender flares, which I mean, it's kind of hard to tell, but the factory fender just kind of ended where this starts. So it was always flinging stuff up before I was fully enclosed. It was flinging stuff right in the machine. So the Kemimoto fender flares are nice. Um, they do probably have a little bit better brand. The plastic itself is holding up all right. It's pretty much the same color as all the Can-Am plastics. My only complaint is the hardware that these come with is complete trash. It's like Chinese screws. I was pretty much tightening it by hand with a screwdriver and some of them broke. I don't remember which ones broke, but there's a couple of them that uh, broke off. But anyways, they're holding up all right. My only complaint about them is the back ones, how they're kind of rounded off. I don't like that look. I know a lot of people will just run the front ones to kind of block the mud and stuff getting flung up. Kind of wish I would have went that route, but they're already on. So I'm not going to complain. They're all holding up. None of them have broke. I haven't really bounced them off anything. Um, haven't hit any trees or anything with the actual fender flares. But yeah, they're holding up. Oh, actually right here, you can see one of the heads broke off. I'll replace them eventually. If any more of them break, that's probably when I'll do it. Up next, you guys see I have the bent metal off-road DOT glass windshield with the wiper kit. I know it's kind of hard to see up in there, but I do have the powered wiper. This windshield is awesome. It's kind of pricey, I know, um, but you get the vents, which I end up having paint match to match the um, magma red, they call it the color of the X3. But I got the vents, I got the powered wiper. Um, Though my only complaint about it is I wish the wiper went a little bit further across the windshield. It stops like right about in the middle, so it doesn't really clear much for your passenger. Driver, I mean, you can see fine. It's not a deal breaker. I would probably buy this again. There is rumors that they're working on a new wiper motor that has a further range in it so that would be cool down the road if um, if they got one that can kind of clear the whole windshield it's just held on with these velcro straps so if you do need to pull it off um super easy to pull off the other straps are up top i know it's kind of hard to see cameras focusing but you got two here and then one on the bottom on each side um so you can take it off real quick if you need to yeah i will also have the installation video for all of the mods and the mod list down below so if you want to check the links out everything will be down below in the description up next you can see i got the aux beam 50 inch curved light bar on here um these are just some amazon light bar mounts then will be down below in the description as well um i haven't ran the light bar a lot since i picked this up right before winter it's pretty much been winter most majority of the time that i've owned it i did flip it on one time haven't done a lot of night riding 
So I'm excited to try it out and uh, run it a little bit more. But yeah, I ran Aux Beams products in the past. My Razor, if you guys watched the video of the cheapest Razor I could find, I did have the Aux Beam pods up on it. I have a 50 inch aux beam light bar on my jeep it's been on there for like seven years no moisture none of the leds are burned out works fine and then i do have the aux beam switch panel which we'll go over here in a little bit i am not sponsored by aux beam but their products are pretty good for how cheap they are so the next mod is actually the aux beam switch panel as you can see i have the button for the light bar um, my x bright chase bar and then a separate one to flip on the white leds for the x bright chase bar and then these two or these three i guess i still have open for future mods um if you guys don't know what this is instead of having individual uh rocker panel switches for each thing you can have six of them mounted on here that you can turn on and off i have the controller temporarily mounted down here once i do my radio and i enclose this little cubby area in i'm going to move it and mount it up in there for now i just got it down there the thing's pretty sweet kind of makes it easier to install any electronics on the vehicle would highly recommend that it's definitely a lifesaver as you guys can see here i am fully enclosed I do have the BRP upper doors. Um, these things are pretty pricey. I know they make some cheaper ones. There's a couple different brands. I think Kemimoto actually makes one too, but uh, it's nice. And the trails, when it's dusty, you can roll these up as long as it's not too hot. There's a lot of heat that circulates in these machines. Um, so if you're zipped up, I mean, it keeps the dust and everything down. Um, you can roll them down. As you can see, there's a little strap right here, so you can have them rolled down. They're pretty much just like a soft upper door for uh, for a Jeep. These were super easy to install. Only thing is, um, you do need a rivet gun. So if you don't have one of them, keep in mind you'll have to get one of them or one of the hand riveters, which you can actually pick up super cheap. I think you can get one for like $10 that comes with rivets. Um, but yeah, upper doors, pretty nice, especially here in Michigan in the winters. Up next, we're not gonna really touch on this too much. I do have the Kemimoto storage bag in the middle. It's pretty hard. Um, mounts right to your access panel to gain access to like your turbo and stuff. Yeah, extra storage, cause pretty much from factory, the only storage you get is the glove box. So it's nice having these. I know they do door bags, which door bags are awesome. Would highly recommend. I'm just not doing them on this machine because I'll eventually I'm gonna be making my own like door card and then I'm gonna mount a speaker in it. So that's the only reason I didn't go with the door bags i have that storage there which uh you'll see i added some other storage here in a minute next mod is my back window that you see i have on here um i don't know the brand of this i'll have it linked down below i did just get it off amazon it's probably the cheapest one i could find super easy to install probably one of the easiest things to install on here you do have to drill two holes one here and then there's one on the other side so this was like the first thing after the windshield um first mods that i did to it so it kind of sucked having to drill a hole into my brand new machine but back window highly recommend there's a couple bolts that go in up top blocks down um dust keeps dust from like going around this seat well i guess there'll be b pillar on here and then circulating back into the cab so me having the windshield upper doors that back window i can pretty much ride this thing and not have to worry about dust as long as it's not super hot and then i have to roll the windows down but uh yeah back window i feel like it's a must you can tint these i think you can buy them tinted there's a ton of different aftermarket ones out there so i mean kind of just pick which one you like best that's in your price range and go from there next mod is the 36 inch x bright chase bar this thing's sweet i know a lot of people run whips um i've always wanted a pre-runner so the chase bar kind of I don't know it does it more for me i think i like the looks of it better i do have it tied into my brake lights so the farthest lights out um are always lit up red when you hit the brakes they light up brighter the amber ones second ones in um are pretty much just amber all the time and then as i said on my switch panel the two middle ones are white so once i get my backup camera installed i got that switch so i can flip it so the white ones come on so i have the backup light or if we're working on something in the trail I can flip them on the next thing that i did and i mean i don't know how much these protect like sticks and damage but the reason why i did it was to protect from sand and rocks and stuff flinging up as you can see there's like some dust on here it's not worn down it's just dust but uh my big thing the trailing arm guards they also call them like rock blockers and stuff but these things pretty much just protect the debris that your front tires fling up they protect your trailing arm guards so you're not like sandblasting the powder coat off of them that's pretty much the only reason why i got them i want to keep my machine nice so i picked these up they're about 100 bucks um they do work pretty good as you can see it's pretty worn down um it's kind of just one of the mods that you don't want to do but if you want your machine to stay looking nice 
you uh, you kind of commit and then throw them on. As you can see, I have them on both sides. So uh, yeah, trailing iron guards, pretty solid, uh, pretty decent mod. These are super easy to put on too. Um, all you do is put, you got you do have to drill out if you have the XRC with the rock sliders on it. Um, you do have to drill out these rivets here, put the bolt through, and then it just bolts to your sway bar end link. And then uh, it's pretty much like a plastic cutting board you put on. Next mod would be the 44 inch Plano hard bow case. Yes, this is a bow case. This isn't a Can-Am storage trunk or bed storage unit. This is a hard bow case that you can buy at Walmart. I bought this off Amazon. It's like 44 bucks. If you guys want to watch the video, like I said, card in the top corner. Everything will be linked down below. Right now, all I have is a tool bag in here. What I use this. The main reason that I wanted more storage was because in the two-seater you don't have a whole lot of storage so bringing my camera and stuff out when we go on rides my passenger was having to hold on to the camera bag now i can just throw the camera bag in here not have to worry about it i do have it bolted on as you can see there's a bolt right there um i did one on it'll probably be easier to see it on this side you might not even be able to a bolt way up in there and then i have the one right here so i got four bolts holding this thing on it's pretty sturdy for what it is it's just extra storage so for 600 miles um tires i mean they're starting to get worn down a little bit i do slide this thing around in the corners a lot <laughs> Um, good thing is they're all the same size so you can rotate the fronts with the backs. They're DOT rated tires. Um, I just figured I'd touch on that. If anyone was wondering how the Maxxis Liberties hold up, they are good for rocks and stuff. Haven't done a whole lot of rock crawling with it just because it was winter. Um, but since there's such a tight lug pattern, once you get into like wet sand up here, like if you're up by St. Helen or in mud, they do pack up pretty easy. Um, they're not a super aggressive mud tire, so I kind of knew that going into it. Um, but yeah, no complaints with them so far. So for the bad, um, my only complaints about this machine so far is I did throw a check engine light on our first, I, I guess it'd be like our first trip of the spring. Um, I'll throw some clips up here, but we were just cruising along, gave it some throttle, check engine light, went into limp mode, couldn't do anything, pulled over, looked up the code, it said it could have been a handful of things. Didn't really give me an exact answer of what it was. Um, Every one that I found on the forums, because it's the same code across their snowmobiles, jet skis, side-by-sides, um, -side four-wheelers. Everyone kind of said the same thing. They turned their machine off, turned it back on, code never came back up. It still kind of leaves you worrying, even though I do have warranty on this thing. Um, I don't know what happened. I don't know what made that code pop up. So that's one flaw. That's one, I mean, it's a pretty big flaw for a brand new machine throwing a check engine light. That's really the only flaw. Everything else is just kind of like my personal preference, I guess. Um, I'll do a video going over the things that I don't like about it, coming from a guy who rides razors. The seating position is awesome. Getting in and out of it, though, is not that great, um, just because it sits like a sports car. Like I said, it's just small, minor stuff like that, like the cup holder being back behind your arm. It's harder to get to. Kind of wish it was something up a little bit farther because you're not using the shifter all the time. Well, at least I'm not, so if you could shove that back and maybe just put two cup holders next to each other. Um, but like I said, it's all personal preference, not a deal breaker at all. We are going to be doing a merch giveaway. We're like 200 subscribers away. So if you guys want to be entered in to win some free merch, literally all you have to do is subscribe, have that bell turned on. So you get the notification. So when I do the giveaway video, you are aware of it. You can comment on that video. It's literally free. If you guys enjoyed this video, please smash that like button. It really helps out the channel. And if you guys have any questions about anything I went over in this video, feel free to drop it down below. I try my best to get back to you guys. But yeah, until next time, guys, I'm out.